There we go. We are now live. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are, you are tuned in to the Dr. Byron uh, show, variety show uh, uh, for our internet television network. And I have my co-host with me, John Williams. Go ahead and say, what's up, June? What's going on out to, um, what is it, Television Land ITV? <laughs> the uh, co-host. So and I also have a, a, a new friend, um, Mr. Charles Moore. How you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. I'm glad to be on the show with you, Dr. Herman. Amen. Amen. You know, I seen your I seen your um your portfolio just me out, you know, a lot of us and I, I'm here I am going through these artists and I, I was like Okay, nah, I, 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 nah. So I get to yours and I hear this jamming song, and I'm like, okay, this was up, you know. So I, I got an I got an interview this night. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and, and then you will find most of my art interviews like to have fun here. So uh, uh, once you get that feel, once you get a feel of us, just join on in, man. We we crazy folks. So once you get that feel, <laughs> come on in and be yourself. <laughs> All right. So, so first of all, what I like to do is, um, uh, why don't you tell uh, everybody a little bit about yourself and who you are and what the first project that we're going to talk about? Okay. Well, uh, my name is uh, Charles Moore, and um, um, I'm actually a pastor out of Indianapolis, Indiana, and okay. uh, pastor a church called Divine Direction Christian Church, um, and um, uh, you know, I'm married, the uh, lovely family, um, you know, uh, I just I love the Lord. I'm a musician. Um, I sing. I write. Um, and, um, you know, just love being able to, to do uh, community outreach and uh, being a blessing to other people. Uh, we're saved to serve. So that's right. that's who I am. Pretty, pretty much. Um, then, um, you know, I have. Um, uh, a book out and uh, a, a new book out, Standing on the Word of Adonai, and then I have uh, uh, an album out called Keeper of My Soul. Uh-huh. You're gonna hear, we're going to hear that song in a little bit, little bit later on uh, during this program. So what what is the backstory behind that, behind that uh, Keeper of My Soul? What is the backstory behind it? You know, man, I tell you what, I uh, when I was uh, putting the project together, I had uh, the song keeper in my soul. Well, well, first of all, there's there's an old there's a I, I have a kind of a saying. You know, sometimes uh, you know people will uh, say, "What songs do you do, you know do you like on your album? Tell me your favorite." And um, uh, I don't much listen to uh, my re my recordings when I'm done. Um, I move on to the next. But uh, the the secret for me is this: whatever the name of the album is, is my favorite song. <laughs> so, so um, keep, keep, keep her of my soul um, is my favorite song. And the backdrop on that is uh, I just thought about, it's a love letter to God. It's, I think about Psalms 91 and how, you know, he talks about how he, he he'll, he'll look out for us. He'll take care of us. Um, He'll make sure no hurt, harm, or danger comes upon us and for us to just basically trust him. And so when I thought about that, I think about my life and I thought about all the things that he's done uh, for me and um, and that words just can't even describe how I feel uh, for the Lord um, because I love him that much and how even through my ups and downs, he's always been there to look out for me, man. And so... Um, he certainly, he's definitely the keeper of my soul. That's where that all came from. Okay, okay. That's it in that's a nutshell. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. And that's it, that's it. Uh, and, you know, and, and you know, you get a lot of people that write songs and uh, the whole long, the backstory be longer than their bio. You know, and, <laughs> and, you know I, uh -huh. like the, I like the way you, you know, and, and, um, you know, most backstories of songs, just like our books, because I'm an author also. So just mm. like our books, you know, when we write books, we like to write a, a, the a idea about our experiences. 
Right. You know, something right. that we have experienced. So you wrote your book on something you have experienced, just like with the songs. That's an experience that you went through. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. And you're, sharing, yeah. and you're sharing it. You know, God is using you to share it to the world. Yeah. So, you know, this is awesome. This awesome thing. Well, yeah. Dr. Hurd, I, I wanted to say, you know, to your point, that's 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 really a very true and very powerful that as you know, as songwriters and as authors and stuff like that. I mean, you know, basically you are exposing yourself uh, to other people. Right. You are letting them see your heart and um, and you're letting them see, uh, you know, what's in it. And and a lot of times that's based on where you've been. You know, uh, so I would agree with that 100 percent. That's and, and when you do that to me, the songs and what you write, comes from a genuine place you know right right you know and then people can tell too because for one thing uh me and my wife got a saying that we like to say and john knows what it is we say holy spirit activate you know we like to activate the holy spirit mm -hmm. so if along with the holy spirit if you don't have the anointing in what you do and then yeah, and people will know if it's anointed or not you know. mm-hmm mm-hmm mm -hmm. so I agree great John you have any questions you want to ask Mr. Moore John you have any oh yeah you I was just letting you I was letting you <laughs> I was just letting you take over everything I know it's your guest tonight and uh, but I was trying to find something to write some stuff down because it was interesting you know uh jumping into you know uh just jumping into you know the subject and uh, having, you know, subject matter and just really just saying who you are and everything like that. I'm definitely uh, delighted and enlightened to be able to uh, meet you and come on the show with you tonight and have you sure. on as a special guest. You know, but um, yeah, I, I did have some questions that I was um, writing down. I know you're a pastor, you're a writer, you're a songwriter. Um, have you ever done have you ever done anything in radio and television? Uh, have you ever done any plays, anything like that? Uh, but one of my main questions would be, um, did you did you go to a Bible school? Did you go to a school college like that or uh, anything? What inspired you uh, to, to start in ministry? And did, did you have anything that uh, was like tragic uh, that took place and then that, that really transpired and really got, got you motivated into um, into uh, going into writing and to doing other things like that? Those are some of the things that I wanted to ask. And then I kind of got a list of, of it when, as, as you get into it. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember what I said, <laughs> let me see if I can, let me see if I can, if I can, if I can, if I can categorize all everything. If I, if my ginkgo is working right now. My ginkgo is <laughs> Well, so so the, uh, the the television thing. Well, I was blessed to be on a Bobby Jones Gospel. I did that. I was on the Dorinda Clark show. Um, okay. I've done that, and then uh, I was really fortunate back in the day to have a little part playing in Robert Townsend's movie, The Five Heartbeats. I played in the band as when as a bass player. That all happened by by accident, but and I would imagine that the movie would have ended up becoming a classic and I got the opportunity to be be in it. So so I was grateful for that. Um, in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, you know writing songs. So when I was dad used to write songs. My father was a musician. So um, I can remember my father, when he would write songs, he used to experiment on me, man. He, he'd have me come stand by the piano. In fact, we'd be out playing basketball with our buddies. And he'd come to the door and say, you got to come in because you got to practice. I'm like, we in the middle of a good game. But he wanted me to stop and come in. I'm like, and my buddies, I'd be looking at them. They'd be like, oh, man, you got to go in. I'm like, I got to go in and practice. They're like, but we, 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 we playing a good game. I'm like. What am I gonna tell my father? I can't. I gotta go in. I'd give him the ball, and they, yeah, because they'd say, "Well, can we go ahead and keep playing without you?" <laughs> and they'd keep playing. I'd go in, and I'd be standing by the piano with an attitude, and he'd be playing. And him, you better get this note right, sing. <laughs> and so he would. Sing. And my father, uh, you know, he wrote songs, and it's really funny because uh, uh, I didn't go to school to write songs or anything like that. It just, it's a gift. Um, you know, yeah. uh, Dr. Hernan was talking about anointing. Well, I'm telling you, I'm 
I, I'm, I'm a, a living example of that because I didn't go to school for that. Um, I sang a lot as a little boy because my aunt Gertrude Hope, she was a radio personality in Northeastern Ohio, which was where I was really originally from, Akron, Ohio. And so they used to have me do, uh, my father would write songs and then they would have me out singing. Um, I opened for the Williams Brothers, Jackson Southerners, Rosie Haynes, a lot of different ones as a little boy. And so okay. what happened was over, over the years, basically I just, I gravitated to writing songs. And so, um, you know, I wasn't saved all my life. And so I used to write secular songs and I, I, you know, had played in boy bands and garage bands and battle other bands. And, um, and, uh, I just, uh, I just started learning how to do it. And it was like, the Lord just started giving it to me. And, um, when I go to bed at night, I, I have dreams about songs. Um, and that's how I know their songs, because I'd wake up in the morning with them on my mind, with melodies um, that I can't even explain. All I can say is the Lord would give them to me. I, yeah, I just wake my, up. just told my whole story in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> see there? Hey, see? You know, so you know where I'm coming from. I just yeah. wake up in the morning and I have the song. And, uh, and I remember my brother asked me, he's a pastor over in Ohio. And he asked me, he said, where did you get the song from? I said, what do you think? <laughs> you know, he said, listen to the melody. How did you come up with that? I'm like, man, that is definitely divine because I'm not that that smart. Now, going to uh, you talk about Bible college because you, you mentioned that. So I want to make sure I address yeah. that. No, I've never been. <laughs> yeah. to Bible college. I am. Um, I, I graduated from college, uh, Kent State University with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Um, I uh, graduated with an MBA. Um, I have a master's of business administration, and I also have a law degree. I have a JD. Um, okay. so, so, so God blessed me to do all of that. But then God personally taught me about what it means to serve him. And so I am thankful because he taught me that you could be an educated fool. You need to let the Holy Ghost guide you and educate you. And I'm not knocking anybody that's going to Bible college. I can only speak for what God did for me. And right, um, right, I've, been, right. I've been a pastor for 18 years, 18 Amen. years. And um, I've seen a lot happen over the years. And um, I should also add this, and I don't say this to boast um, because, uh, you know, whatever God does with someone else, that's them. But whatever ministry he has for someone else, that's them too. So for 18 years, I've been a pastor. I've never had a salary from my church. Um, we've always taken the money. Any money that we gain from our church, we use it to do things like uh, help people keep their lights on, uh, um, you know, put food you. on the table, have a food pantry. And I'm not talking about where we just give out crackers and beans. We give out good quality produce and things of that nature. Um, we've uh, had uh, what we call back to school jams where we could give out school supplies and, and uh, boys, gentlemen, haircuts, um, uh, adopted families from, you know, sickle cell foundation and, um, partner with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and even with some of the proceeds that I've got from, from my first album, uh, Divine Direction, um, we did a concert at, on the campus of Butler University here in Indianapolis where we took every proceed, every dollar, every penny earned from uh, music. I did a concert, uh, sold our music there. I did a book signing on my first book, Given Up Is Not An Option. And we had all the representatives there and we gave every single penny to them so that we could adopt families to have, uh, you know, wishes. Um, so um, ministry to me, it truly is about serving um, and, uh, you know, uh, doing what the Lord Jesus commanded us to do. So, you know, I hope I answered some of your questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I think that latter part, that end part, uh, didn't you, you say it uh, in Indianapolis, right? Yes, sir. You up in Indianapolis, so, Indiana. Uh, uh, so you you uh you in the uh, in the is that ain't that the state of uh, the former vice president Mike Pence? Mike yep. Pence? Yes, sure absolutely. Is. I thought so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I thought so. Um King yeah, Lord, that, King Lord Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, um and I was gonna ask you, uh, because it's interesting, you know, your story is very fascinating, you know, and I know you're just kind of wheezing through it, but um, you know, as a as a kid coming up. Um, I know you know basketball and everything. Did you ever did you ever participate in playing? What what instruments do you play? Do you play any? 
Oh yeah. Well, first, um, my uh, my first instrument was uh, playing the drums. Uh, my father they had a group called the Spiritual Lights, and so I uh, I was their drummer. You know, at the age of like twelve, um, actually okay. I played the drums for the church, on and off. Yeah. But then yeah. I was the drummer for my dad, and then my father was a bass player, and so okay. um, I used to go sneak in his bass guitar. I'd open it up when he wasn't around, sneak in it. Take, take it out, play it, and then try to put it back in the case and straighten the strap across it like nothing happened. And he knew I did it. <laughs> he knew I did it. But what ended up happening was, uh, I, you know, later on, man, I started playing the bass. And I started playing the bass secular. And my mom came across one day. And she said to me, son, she said, you know, you're pretty good on that thing. She said, but the day you give your life to Christ, you're going to play. And I'll never forget, um, you know, those words. And that's essentially, you know, what happened. Um, I started playing the bass and uh, I started playing the uh, uh, upright bass, the uh, okay. fretless bass, piccolo bass, six string okay. bass. Anything okay. that's bass was good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Treble bass. <laughs> oh, you ain't kidding, man. You ain't kidding. What, what about, oh, what, did, you play, did you play the keyboards as well? Just a little bit. I do that when I'm writing songs. So uh, when I, I have a home studio, so when I'm sitting down doing uh, writing, I use a combination of my bass guitar and a little bit of the keyboards to uh, to navigate. And I play a little guitar as well. Oh, okay. okay. Absolutely. You know, you you talked a little bit about the. Um, I don't want to go back on doing you know television. I know you've been in uh, done some things in radio. Uh, as well um, on the Bobby Jones gospel, you know my grandmother. I, that's in 1990, 91. Oh my goodness, we were staying in Longview, Texas. Shout out to Longview, Texas. I was a Lobo then. I was a young, I'm a young man, and uh, and I was 15, 16, 15, 14, 15 in 90, 90, 91, 15. And um, but the Bobby Jones gospel show would come on. Uh, and we were going to uh, church in Longview. Um, that was under uh, Bishop Noel Jones. Uh, this is at the time when he was in Longview. Now he's out in uh, in, in L.A. now. But um, and so every time the, the Bobby Jones Gospel Show would come on, my grandmother, she, she, you just had to you just had to sit down and watch it. And I got kind of mm -hmm. hooked on it, you know, with mm -hmm. all the different inspiration that it was. Tell us how how was it uh, on there? What what all did you do, and who all did you get a chance to meet, and how did that inspire you? Can I uh, can I add to that before you answer that? Um, I, with you being on the Bobby Jones Gospel, you probably know. A good friend of mine that's that hosted with him, uh, Doctor Mr. Edward Drake. I'm not sure now. Look, you know, I'm he gonna clear right for some guy. He sung the song "Amen Goes Right There." I think I know who you're talking about. Uh -huh. I think. Well, I've heard so, of him. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you. I was actually on. He had Bobby had the Bobby Jones Gospel. Then he had the uh, Bobby Bobby Jones uh, show on the Impact on the Impact. Okay. And so I was on that. I went, I've been on that oh, twice. I'm on the original. You went on the yeah, original. not the original, but I've been on the other one. So I want to make sure I clarify that. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah. It's but still you, Bobby Jones. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was say. When you think of Bobby, you just think of Bobby Jones' gospel. Right, yeah. Right, you, it's right. still Bobby Jones' gospel. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, how did that? How did that? How did that impact you in enlightening being with the uh, five heartbeats on that on that on that on that set and on that movie playing in that? What did um. Um, and did you get a chance to meet uh, Mr. Townsend? I, I've always been enlightened by his by his star roles, his acting ability, his uh, directing ability, and everything that he's done. And uh, you know, I've always been a fan of his. Uh, and so, I just wanted to can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. Well, two things. First, I'll tell you, Bobby was a good guy. Um, he, Bobby Jones. I want to make sure I give him a shout out. He. Yeah. Yeah. When I got on his show, man, he uh, uh, he was um, I. I realized just how much he had done for so many people over the years. And I think sometimes we, we don't realize that I had an opportunity to, to be on the show and he was very hospitable, not only the first time, but when I came back the second time, uh, he said, Hey, you know, I really like you. He, and, and I said, well, you do. He said, I play your music all the time. And I was totally unaware of that. And so, um, 
it was an honor. Um, and uh, he was so hospitable and I was appreciative of that. Where the five heartbeats are concerned, I tell you, I was. And let me say this real quick before you say that. I just want to say this really, not, not to cut you off. So it could that remind, made me think of, um, um, he really reminded me of a, um, oh, what is his name? The Soul Train? Don Cornelius. Yeah, it, 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 he, he would be like the Don Cornelius of gospel, huh? Yeah, he, he pretty much would be. He would he would, he would, he would, he would, he would definitely be that man. Yeah, I mean, and he and he has, you know that uh, like a, Yeah. In fact, if you go to my website, you'll see a clip of me on there performing. Yeah, if you go okay. to my website at uh, at uh, www.charlesmorerpraise.com and if you go to uh, a video, you'll see a video clip of me performing on his show. And I think you'll see him back there kind of dancing around. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Is that W M? I mean, is that M W? I mean, M double O R E double O R E? Yep, it's M O O R E R. More er. A little bit more than. Oh, more. okay then. Okay. Yep, it was Charles More er Praise.com. Okay. Yep. So you'd be able to see some some of the video clippings. I think there might even be one on Dorinda as well. Um, okay. You asked about the uh, Robert Townsend. I tell you what. Yeah. Uh -huh. Robert Townsend is he is one nice guy. So I got I I happen to be on uh, I happen to uh, get the uh, opportunity to be in that movie actually by default. One of my cousins um, had a friend who was playing with uh, I think her name was Olita Adams. Um, and, uh, he, his name was Aaron. He was supposed to play. They, they were putting together bands for various scenes and he was supposed to, to participate, but he had to take a concert, uh, she was doing over in the Bahamas. So I was in the studio at the time working in Malibu beach. And my cousin said, Hey, Aaron can't make this gig. Hey, you, uh, you, you want to make the gig? I said, well, sure. So I went and, uh, uh, it was it was pretty cool because I got to meet uh, Diane Carroll, um, the uh, Nicholson was it Nicholson twin Nichols twins the t the tap dancers. I got to meet one of them. Um, I got to meet so many different people. Uh, Eddie Griffin. Um, yeah, and, uh, that's right. And then, uh, yeah, and then Robert Townsend. And the thing I remembered the most about Robert was right before they did the scene um, where they sing "A Heart Is a House of Love." Yeah. Um, yeah, and he was he played on the piano and he threw the guy off the piano uh, because the guy was messing up his song. Yeah. He threw him off the piano. You know? <laughs> uh, I, I remember Robert was trying to get in character for that. He was trying to get in character for that, and I'll never forget. Uh, nobody else was around, and I was just standing there toying around uh, with my bass guitar, and I was just just kind of you know everybody was kind of relaxing, and and he was. You know, it was a break and he's getting in, in character. And at the time, um, his character was actually supposed to be more comical. And a lot of people don't realize that it was actually supposed to be a comedy, but it became mm -hmm. serious. And so uh -huh. while Robert was standing there getting in character, I was toying around with the bass and I looked over at him. I said, hey, Robert, I said, man, this is this is some good stuff you're doing. And then he said, man, thanks. And he said, man, I hope this will. I hope this will be a good movie. I said, I think it's going to be based on what you're doing. And then we just had a conversation. He was so down to earth. We must have talked about 20 minutes uh, and he was just down to earth. And then it was time to shoot the scene. And then he went on. But it was so cool. And then here we are years later and the movie's a classic. It's an honor. Classic. Couldn't classic. happen to a nicer guy. Couldn't yeah. happen to a nicer Definitely. guy. Definitely. Right it's just like the classic meteor man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and you know who um you were mentioning those nicholas brothers those yeah. nicholas brothers twins man those tap dancers i love them they did one episode on i don't can't remember what it was where they was on those stairs and they, they would jump over each other and do the uh -huh. splits and then the other oh, yeah. get back up and jump over them all the way down those stair steps boy those boys was bad oh, i know man. that was awesome to be on that uh on that set with them most was, and, you, and you really don't realize you you know i i was you know much younger and uh you know you didn't realize just how much you were you know in the presence of 
you know, people who've been around the industry for so long and who have paved the way for so many different people. You know, uh, you know, you look at the uh, Nicholas twins and then you think of Gregory Hines, you know, who became a tap dancer and, you know, um, and even, you, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. and all those guys who could tap dance, you know, um, but you, 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 you do have an appreciation for uh, their talent, you know, uh, yeah. you realize that they had talent and that it was just um, it was a unique experience. That's that's all I had to say. It was just a unique experience. And I'm thankful. What, one more question, because uh, I wanted to get into some of the songs. What, were you able to collaborate on any other songs? Did you write any other songs? And one song that in particular, I think it was from that movie, um, the one he was he did with his little sister. They was in the room, and it was no matter how high I get. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. No, I, I, no, I, I, I can't take any credit for anything. I just had the opportunity to be in their presence. Uh, I think uh, some of the songs in there came from. I want to say I think the movie soundtrack. Some of them like were from the Dells, and there were some other people okay. who did some stuff. Yeah, but okay. I, was just, okay. I was just thankful to be able to, you know. To, to now say I even got a five heartbeat sweatshirt that's still hanging up and, and I got it encased in a gla glass case. I'm like, hey, that's my that's my one thing right there. That was my right. One thing. <laughs> right, right. Did you uh did you do anything after that? Oh, that was your debut and that kind of was that was it, or was there anything after that? Well, you know, it's oh. funny. It's it's funny, um, uh, John, because I um at during that period of time. Um, I, I knew who Christ was, but I wasn't serving him. And right. so I had, um, you know, I was blessed to be able to, uh, it's funny. I was blessed to be able to work with basically everybody that I had actually liked growing up as a kid or as a, a, a young adult. So for example, I had an opportunity to work with a, a, a couple of guys from a, a group called Caneo. Mm -hmm. had a, got an opportunity to work with a couple of groups, uh, uh, guys from a group called Switch, uh, the, oh, yeah. the, 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 the Ingrams, um, James Ingram and those guys. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And so at that time, man, I, I, you know, I was just doing my thing and I was actually doing secular music until one day a strange thing happened to me and it changed my life completely, man. I, uh, man. I was being represented by a lawyer who was from my hometown and he actually had represented James Ingram and James Ingram. Um, uh, when I was a little boy, I had the, uh, him and his brother, Philip, uh, uh, you know, they, their parents, their father and my grandfather was deacons in the church together. And then, uh, I believe Philip played for me a couple times as a little boy. And, um, so my attorney, we all had this connection. And so uh, he just swore I was going to be the next biggest thing. And he took me to this guy, this guy named Tim. And this guy had a keen sense of, uh, uh, you know, music. He, 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 I mean, he's just good, but he was blind. And so my attorney took me in and he said, he's, this guy's a little eccentric, but he knows music. So I want him to listen to yours. And so my attorney took me in there and then my attorney walked out. Tim took a CD that I had written and they called me Sir Charles at the time. <laughs> and they took the music, put it in, and uh, I'll never forget, I was sitting in, in the room with him by myself, man, and he got up, he put the music in, and he had these two giant speakers, one to the left, one to the right. They were up in the corner, bigger than 15-inch speakers. They were big. And, and, and then, man, he, uh, he, uh, he went and he stood, he went to one, went to the left, took his, his, uh, his walker stick, went to the left, put his hand up over the speaker, and then he put it down and went to the right, put his right hand up over the speaker. Then he stopped. Then he walked in the middle of the speakers and he had uh, his back towards me. And he said these words. He said, Sir Charles, Sir Charles, Sir Charles, children of the light can't run with children of the dark. In a war, you can't hide in the enemy's camp. Sooner or later, the enemy's going to find you out and you'll be dealt with. You can't serve two masters and you can't straddle the fence. You need to make a decision on who you're going to serve. And when he did that, I thought he was crazy. Um, right after he got finished with that, my lawyer walked right into the room like it was a movie. And uh, he said, hey, Tim, how's everything? And he snapped out of it, man. And he turned around and 
he said, well, his music's okay. And uh, I looked at this guy and I was like, man, this guy is off his rocker. And then, <laughs> uh, then my, uh, my attorney took my, my tape out and gave him his nephew's music and his, his, mu- his nephew's music was not very good. And so the plan was, but his nephew was a great musician. So the plan was his nephew would play with me um, but my music was really good. So his nephew would just play with me. But when he put his nephew's music in, the guy said, now nah, that guy got talent. <laughs> and the lawyer looked at me like, oh my goodness. I got up and I left. I said, man, that dude is crazy. But that was the changing point of my life. I was so despondent. I drove across La Brea Boulevard in California, almost had a car accident and but I, oh, I, I really sat back and I thought about it. And what it was, it was the Lord letting me know it's time to come in. Time to change. Yes. And that's what happened. Now, now where, where are you originally from? Are you originally from California? Or are you originally from where you, uh, uh, where I'm, you are now? I'm originally from Akron, Ohio. Okay. And did, you so, live in, did you live in California for a few minutes? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. I sure did. Okay. What part? In Los Angeles area? Yep. I lived in Los Angeles. Uh, in Van Nuys and and also in the uh, Burbank area. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So growing up in Akron, Ohio, did was was there a significant amount of time there, or, or did you go all the way through school, or you just yeah. that's where you was born? But oh, okay then. Well, t- tell us a little bit about uh, uh, Akron. I I was a truck driver uh, for a little while. And uh, in trans, I was a transportation engineer, and I think I only got a chance to go through Columbus and 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 Cleveland. I never got a chance to go through Akron or uh, or, uh, or or Cincinnati or anything like that. I think ain't that where LeBron's from? Akron. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. LeBron. Okay, okay, guys. Okay, fellas, I want you guys to hold a thought. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play his song <laughs> before we begin. We're going to a quick commercial. <laughs> so, <laughs> so look, you guys. Uh, 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 we want to play uh, Pastor Charles's song, and um, uh, he told you what the backstory was behind it, and now here is, is its debut on our station. What is it called again, Pastor Charles? Keeper of my soul. At a nine. At a nine. Sometimes we all go astray. Cause we wanted things away We like to know We are in control If you surrender your will to Adonai Sometimes we think life's too slow Cause we have some place to go We like to think Life's for here and now Whoa, if you surrender You will to at You will find it Will bring you peace of mind I know when this life it seems just want to chase our dreams and so we just keep holding on until we find our way is wrong you gotta let it do 
You gotta let it work it out. If you surrender, you're willing to let the light. You will find He will be your guiding light. If you surrender, you're willing to add the light. You will find He will bring you peace of mind. Yes, He will. La 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. <laughs> that that song was actually Adonai. It's called Adonai. Adonai. <clears throat> yes. I thought that was I thought, I thought that was uh Keeper of My Soul. Well, the Keeper of the Soul is the title of the album, but that actual song is a, a song called Adonai, and it's about surrendering your will to Adonai. Okay, I like I enjoyed that cut. Was that from a previous album or an earlier album? No, that's from the current album, Keeper of My Soul. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that, and that song basically it, it really is about um, you know, letting go and letting God take the wheel. You know, we talked about and Doc, you, you, were you trying to jump in on anything or would you let me that's how I get to take it over the energy? <laughs> Did you have anything, Doc? <laughs> I, I, I probably well. Let me go on. Um, yeah, but I was going to ask you: Did are you more into um, more into jazz, or do you do, or are you into um, because that was a more of a jazz kind of kind of Caribbean kind of feel? Mm -hmm. um, are, are you are you more um, into uh, like the Southern traditional gospel, uh, or, or are you just well rounded? What, what would you categorize yourself as? Just a, I'm just a, a minister of the gospel through music and whatever the good Lord gives me. Um, that's basically what I do. Well, here, here was my thing. I had asked the Lord um, if he would allow me to if if I'm going to do this, if he would allow me to be able to minister to everybody around the world. And so um, strange thing happened um, as I write the songs come out various ways there's a consistency whether the song is a traditional has a traditional feel to it or, yeah. or not it still, still, still somehow has a smoothness to it so for example um on the keeper of my soul album we have uh we've got a a song called uh, think of your soul which is kind of funky which is where I'm, I'm from, Ohio. So, right. With that, right. <laughs> yeah, so, you and know, that's what we didn't get into. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so, so it's kind of funky. Um, but then if you go back to my, uh, my uh, first project, Divine Direction, Divine Direction has a song on there called Why Should I Fear? And that song was based off an old hymn that the uh, people sang in the Church of God in Christ, specifically my aunt. Uh, it was called Thou Carest, Lord, for me, for me, why should I fear since thou art near, thou carest Lord for me. The Lord blessed me to take that song and do something different with it. It starts off and it kind of got a rock feel, but then it goes right into the traditional. So okay. then, then I've got another song called uh, We Praise You. And that song sounds like you're going to go skating, but it's still all got a smooth tone to it. So, you know, whatever the Lord gives me, that's what I write. Right. A amen. Now, what, who's, uh, who's some of the inspirational uh um gospel artist 
that uh, have inspired you? I mean, no, you got a long history, you know, of uh, coming up and being around it and stuff like that. Well, who are some of the, I guess, later gospel artists who has been in the business that really inspired you besides being besides besides having the uh, the 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 Saul experience? If you, if if I will, <laughs> because you know Saul was knocked off his heart, and he, that's what inspired him. Besides that, who would have been inspired you uh, had you not taken the transition the way it it, it take it, it had taken? I'll tell you something, man. I, I'm glad you asked that question. I, I've not really had that question asked of me very much, and all of the radio interviews that I've done, stuff I've I've not had that asked very much. I'm going to tell you. Um, there were there were people growing up that I listened to and, you know, God bless them. Everyone has their space that God put them in to minister to different people. But the 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 music ministry that inspired me the most was the group called Commissioned. Oh, Commissioned. they were bad. Yes. Commissioned really inspired me. Um, uh, so when I told you the story, um, you know, about. Um, the uh, the blind gentleman and that changed my life. I stopped singing, I stopped playing, and I was actually leaving California. And a very good friend of mine that went to college with me, uh, Bro Steve Stephen Harris. He uh, I stopped to see him as I was getting ready to leave, and um, he threw on an album, and the album was by Commission. I'd never heard of them before, and when he played it, I listened. I said. What is that? And he said, oh, man, this is a commission. I said, you could do gospel like that? He said, oh, yeah, man. And so um, I thought, hmm, well, when the Lord saved me, we moved to Chicago. And when the Lord uh, saved me, the first thing I thought of was, um, you know, um, I got, it's funny, I got rid of all music equipment except my bass. I kept my bass with me. I never got rid of it. And um, when I got saved, the first thing I thought of was uh, Bro Steve telling me about commission. So I started buying commission CDs and, um, or at the time, cassettes. And then uh, I would just play them over and over and over. And they ministered to me so much. I don't know that I listened to anybody else but them, but they just spoke to me. Um, and then my wife started buying uh, stuff from Fred Hammond. And I realized, you know, he was in commission. And uh, and then I started watching Fred and listening to Fred. And I started realizing um, he was the only bass player I knew that was doing it that way. He was singing and playing bass out front. And so uh, when the Lord brought me back um, to my roots in the church, um, I didn't know what to do. I started playing for church and then, you know, one thing led to another. I ended up with the group, the, the faithful few. And um, I thought I was going to be the bass player. And the next thing you know, you know, I started singing and playing again. And um, but I started practicing more to Fred because he was the only one that I knew who did what I did and um, and commission and all of that. It just really inspired me and ministered to me. Even today, I can listen to one of their songs, man, and it just busts me up. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm glad you said that, you know, uh, about commission, because that was a group that I mean, the harmony and mm -hmm. they didn't have to have music behind them with the way they harmonized. Um, but also, I think that who also came out of that group did um, did Minister Darwin Hobbs come out of that group as well? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think Hobbs came out of. But you know, Marvin Sapp came out of that. Okay, then. Uh, Fred okay. came out of that, and there's a new yeah. other guy. But, but I don't know. I'm not sure about Hobbs. Did um, I think Fred is the one produced Hobbs, right? Um, uh, uh, if, if I don't want to get that mixed up. Um, uh, were you familiar with uh, Darwin Hobbs' music? A little bit. The name sounds familiar because I think my 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 brother they had a marching group and they used to play his music to the to the uh, the, the the youth marching group. And yeah, uh, yeah, so, first yeah. I heard of it. <laughs> yeah, he he's uh, a I guess was would have been in like a Luther. Uh, he would yep. have been compared to him. Uh, mm -hmm. That's who he was compared to, and somebody else I can't remember who he was compared to as well. Um, he had the voice like them, um, but I, I got his first album and I was like blown away with with, with Hobbs. But um, yeah, this is 
this is you know, and with Fred as well. I've actually just got to listening to some 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 of Fred and Radicals for Christ uh, wow. the other day. Yeah, um, 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 one of his more secular songs, not just what you say. He did in uh, 2004. I like that album there mm -hmm. um, that he done. Uh, he he lives uh, that mm. particular that particular yeah. album. Yeah, I, yeah, that album blew me away. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that boy's nasty. Yeah, so yeah. you you certainly got a powerhouse right there. Yeah, he, <laughs> certainly yeah, got a powerhouse. Yeah, them them him, the Fred them guys man. Whew. I mean they are yeah they they are something else and their music is it's. It's uh, you know, it's timeless. It's enduring. I mean, you can still listen to it, and just it just sounds really good, and it does. It really ministers to me. So I'm really a product of that ministry. I really, really am. Uh, my mic got muted. I think Dr. Herndon wanted to ask the question. Did you want to? Were you trying to say something, Doc? If not, I'm on. <laughs> If not, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep going. Um, <laughs> yeah. He yeah, muted me again. Can you hear? Now I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, Doc. Can you? I, I was muted again. I'm thinking um, he was trying to ask you something. Can you hear? Can you hear Dr. Herndon? Nope. Mm -mm. No, okay. So yeah, you were talking about the church, um, and uh, I was going to ask you, you know, because that's that's a good thing about giving back, because that's something that we have really. Um, we were talking about church hurt in um, in iron iron sharp and iron. Um, and some of the things that make a good leader, you certainly would have been a real good, um, um, a real good candidate um, in that particular uh, topic we were having, and share some of your input and output. Uh, and some of the things that took place when I was a young minister coming up uh, was that we didn't have any coming up as a young church. We didn't have any bereaved funds or any benevolent funds mm -hmm. that would be taken back because, you know, you can come, you can store up at the storehouse, but the storehouse have to be a, right. a like the ax church or like how Joseph was, you right. know, you, you got to give some bread and some barley back somewhere. Right. Get, t tell us a little bit about that and how that, how has that really enlightened some of the members um, there and and put a smile on their face as well. But to be able to have that, to come to the storehouse, to be able to really disperse that to people that's really in need and not hold it. Can you, mm -hmm. can you smile on that? Yeah, you know, actually, one of the things that I did was, is I made sure the church was aware that, number one, I'm not there to get your money. I'm not there to take your money. And I'm not going to hold you hostage and tell you, lock the doors and everybody stand up and give me $10 or everybody stand up and give me $20 or everybody line up over here. I don't believe in that at all. What Man. I believe is this. If you love the Lord and you know what his word says, you'll give. It's not my job to stand up and hijack you and beat you up about that. Whatever God means to you, he means to you. You know, um, the God you serve will serve you back. And so um, what I'll do is I will tell people, you know, um, it's time to, to, you know, to give. You give whatever you have. See, I remember when I was growing up, I remember times were really hard for us. And I used to watch my mom get up and she didn't, really didn't have anything. But she'd get up and she'd go and she'd touch the table. I know some people would look at that and think that's, that makes no sense and you shouldn't do that. But let me tell you something. My mom would do that. And um, I'll never forget, um, you know, uh, her, her kids were blessed to go to college. And one day she was blessed to own her own business. And that woman who used to get up and go touch the table became the person that used to take care of the church. She would give money to the church. She would buy clothes. I mean, she would have racks of clothes that she bought where people could come in and get coats, dresses, boots, shoes. Um, she went from a woman that got up to touch the table 
to being able to touch hearts and being able to touch lives in ways that, you know, so I learned a lot from that. And um, I said, if the Lord wanted me to be a pastor, because I didn't really want to be one, but if he, uh, if that's what he wanted me to do and that happened, that I would, I was not going to be standing up there begging people. I'm going to tell you, you know what you got to do. You know what God means to you. I don't know why God set it up where, you know, people have to give in order for the church to function, you know, but I think, you know, the Lord set it up so that that way, you know, trust in the Lord with your finances it basically says you're surrendering to him everything. You trust him with everything. And here's what happened. The people give. We've never wanted for anything. We've never bugged anybody for anything. And some of the stories we have were just amazing. I remember our roof was messed up in the church. It was messed up so bad that it started leaking in the building. And I had some friends come out and appraise the church and um, some companies come out and the roof, all the work was 24,000 on the roof. And then in the inside, there was work that needed to be done. Man, when they got done, they charged us 10 grand and we were able to pay it and walk away. Um, I remember one time one of our air units went out. Um, we were able to pay cash, get that squared away. Um, you know, anything we needed to get done when we opened up our food pantry, we have the first food house in the area because we have a, a parsonage that we converted into a food house. And I remember them telling me, uh, you know, Pastor, that could be your salary. You know, you could rent that out. And I told them, nah, we're not doing any of that. We, we first made it a daycare. I had people there with me 14 years and they were such a blessing, man. They um, I told them I'm going to charge you one dollar a month. One dollar, no, I'm sorry, one dollar a year. And all I want you to do is take care of the babies over there. Don't shame the church. And um, and uh, and we'll take care of the kids as well. But a funny thing happened. Um, they did that and so much more. I uh, remember they brought a guy to get the church parking lot needed to be repaved. And um, the guy said, we'll do it for twelve thousand dollars. And the, the daycare said, listen, we'll pay the 10 church pays the two. I said, OK, no problem. We appreciate that. But a funny thing happened. The guy who owned the company, old fella, came out and he said, hey, he said, that guy over there, that daycare, man, he said, I've been knowing him for years. He don't play. He's sharp as a tag and he really likes you. Then he began to talk to me. You know, when it was all said and done, months and months went by. He never billed for anything, either one of us. And we all paid zero for that. The church needed some remodeling. The daycare came over and remodeled everything. I told them you can use the lower level for classes if you like. Well, they remodeled everything and said, you know, we don't want to just remodel a couple rooms. We'll remodel everything so the church can have it. I appreciated it. I had workers at my fingertips. Um, there was so many things. That they, and then in, on top of that, then they turned around and started giving the church, you know, six, seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars a month. And when they did that, we took that and we gave that to the church. I didn't take there was times they would give it to me and I'd slide it over to my head beacon and say, this goes into the church. And so our people trust trusted the fact that we would do the right things. And they saw that uh, we would do the right things. And in my own, I own a business. I own a business myself. And so with my business, I actually take money once a month and I give it to the church. And so God took care of me and my family and the church family. And so when we tell our church, we got to get this done or we want to get this, there's no questions about where's money going or anything like that. People give because we're responsible with it. That's it. You know, um, can you hear me now? Can yeah. You hear me now? Okay. Yes. Sorry about that. I, uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess uh, I was trying to mute you so I can ask him this question about the church. <laughs> Uh, what type of uh, organization or church organization or denomination? I heard you mention Church of God in Christ earlier. Mm -hmm. What are you? Are you Church of God in Christ? No, that's my roots. I came out of the Church of God in Christ. Um, we're part of what they call the Wesleyan organization, which is uh, Methodist. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay. And that's basically it in a nutshell. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, now I heard you also heard you said you have your own business. What type of business do you have? Actually, I actually own a, an insurance uh, an insurance agency with a twist. We handle claims. 
Um, so we handle personal injury claims. We handle property damage claims, auto accident claims. And I am the first minority owned uh, claims administrator in the state of Indiana. Okay. Yeah, I, have right. I have adjusters, claim adjusters who work for me. John, that's something that you may want to talk about. Yeah. yeah uh, um, do you all get into a lot of mediation? Yep, sure do. Yeah, now I, that's that's my field there. You know, um, I'm I'm a, a paralegal myself, so I'm a paralegal student, and oh. uh, I got a small. <laughs> well, so uh, well, welcome to uh, uh, welcome to the minor leagues. I, I'm I'm familiar with the major as well. I want, I want the finder scene, okay? I, I want the finder scene, yeah. <laughs> this so. Uh, I was. I heard you say a BA, and I knew you said a bachelor's in. Um, you say that again. You you said in, in law. In, my first degree is a bachelor's in criminal justice, and criminal. then I have a, then I have a master's of business administration. I have an MBA, and then I also have a law degree, a JD. Okay, yeah. So uh, as a paralegal, and I've taken so many classes, man. The only thing messed me up was I got to playing around in college. And, uh, <laughs> and this hey, was I recent. <laughs> I got to play around and got to doing all kind of other classes. And I did not think they were going to change their math on us. I didn't think they were going to have us to go um, as far in the math as they wanted us to do to get the um, just to get a certificate. Um, mm -hmm. And so they changed it to college algebra. Uh, um, a high, uh, like really high college algebra. We don't think we're going to be doing legal research writing and stuff like that. We're not trying to be rocket scientists and go to the moon. Or that, right? <laughs> so that threw us off for a little while. So I got to go back and finish and get all this, but all those classes I, I've taken. So we got kind of a lot in common here, but there I want go. to get back to <laughs> um, even, with, even, um, with the music, even with the music uh, uh, a lot of the with me, I, I'm also a music, music graduate, also. So, I, wow. I music and stuff, and also, I'm also a pastor, also. So, I understand. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, I'll tell you, when I was in high school, when I got graduated from college, I actually scholarshiped in music. I scholarshiped in music, me and too. I first, my, my first semester of college was in Greenfield, Tennessee, at a college called Tusculum. Tusculum College. It's about 70 miles outside of Knoxville and about, I don't know, 18 miles away from Johnson City, Eastern Tennessee State. I went yeah. there and um, I went there for voice and um, I got a scholarship and I, I actually wrote my high school graduation song and uh, for our class. And then I scholarship went there and um, uh, I decided while I was there that, uh, you know, I, music was a passion for me anyways. So I kind of looked at it like, well, since it's a passion, it's something I'm going to always do. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go study. Uh, my, my father was a, a deputy sheriff. And so my father, he said to me, he said, hey, son, he said, you know what? I said, what, Pop? He said, look, you know what you ought to study? I said, what? He said, you need to go study criminal justice. I said, really? He said, you know why? I said, no. He said, because there's going to always be criminals. <laughs> <laughs> it was gonna always be injustice. He said, he said, you always have a job, and I said, "Okay, <laughs> sounds good to me." So that's so, so I transferred to uh, Kent State University, and uh, I, you know, I started I started studying criminal justice. That's how that came. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that reminds me of when Jesus got upset with the disciples and told them, you're going to have the poor with you always, <laughs> but me, you won't have always. <laughs> well, he was right. <laughs> you know, you're going to have so, criminals it, always it, studying. It's funny, that, it's funny that you mentioned scholarship because I also got a scholarship through high school uh, to college. Um, I used to play in the college band. And and um uh they I got uh, their college teacher came to my high school teacher and then I guess they were looking over I guess that's how they did with you also they mm -hmm. uh, looked over you and and followed you for a while followed you for a minute and then um you had to write letters and different things like that and that's mm -hmm. what happened I got I was blessed to get a full scholarship with it through it wow you know? wow. wow. God works in mysterious ways. He does. You was absolutely. You was talking about the the church function. How you you 
why the Lord allowed it to be the way it is. You know, and it just remind me of, you know, the biblical term um, Caesar Augusta when he taxed the world. Mm. Uh, and then there it was, you know, uh, a tax on the church, the Roman mm -hmm. taxation, you mm -hmm. know, of the world. And then there are what it, where there it is right there. But you also said something inter interesting too, and it took me to took me to Paul after he be became Paul. Um, you know, he had quoted, you know, faith by my works. You know, faith without works is dead. He said, "I'll show you. You show me your faith by your works." He said, "Show me. I'll show you my faith. Uh, a faith without your works. I'll show you my faith by my work by what I'm doing." So you saying what I'm doing? People see the faith in people see what I'm doing and they gravitate to it because they see it's real because they see the substance in it. A tree mm -hmm. is known by the fruit it bears. Right, <laughs> you know? right, that's, right, and right, so that's, right. that's 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 wonderful. I've always wanted to find a ministry that coupled business with ministry so that it didn't paralyze its its laities, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I look at mega churches, especially black, that dominant mega churches, right. um, without any real grievance and benevolence. And those people, and it's really housing a whole bunch of broke folks mm -hmm. um, who are being dominated by racism, white male, female domination, but just dominated by society within itself uh, mm -hmm. because of the because the way uh, the African American has been crippled. And mm -hmm. I say to myself, you know, when we find the real root church home, that's going to be like the Acts church was, yeah. where everybody was according to their needs, mm -hmm. nobody was lacking, mm -hmm. and couple their business with that, and can and when they, and when we can really do that, then we're we're not going we have to worry about a tenth, we have to worry about a tithe, because yeah. you, you you can give out your necessity, you don't have mm -hmm. to give out your poor or your lack. And mm -hmm. be like the widow mite. You know, Jesus pointed out, you know, she everybody else gave out of their substance and out of their good, but she gave her last. Right. And so, you know, not that that is, you, you know, what I'm saying there's something wrong with giving mm -hmm. your last, but we would, I'd rather be out of the necessity giving out of that than mm -hmm. giving out of the last mm -hmm. um, and then not knowing where it's going to go. But the crude of oil didn't run yeah. dry. And, so, and, yeah. And to your, to your point on that, um, one of the things I, I firmly believe in, you know, you better make sure that the Lord is telling you don't pay your light bill and give the money to the church. You don't turn around. The Bible talks about doing things decently and in order. Yes, and, sir. And, and, yes, sir. and I believe that, um, you know, Paul told Timothy, if you going to run God's house, how you going to run God's house if you can't run your own house? You can't sit around and talk about, well, the Lord going to take care of this, and you don't even take care of your own house. So our guy, hey. don't, he, don't, he doesn't operate that way. If the Lord does that, if the Lord does that, you're going to know that it is him that is doing that. And he don't need no, send me $10 and you're going to get a cloth. Send me $10 and you're going to get some holy water. He don't need to do nothing because Jesus said, freely I give. And so uh, freely I give unto you. And so what we are supposed to do is we're just supposed to do our jobs as uh, ministers of the gospel. We didn't write the Bible. The Bible was inspired by God, and, and, and he made men put uh, ink to paper. And so uh, it is his word and not ours. So, you know, we can't stand up in pulpits around the country talking about the Lord told me to tell you, give me a hundred dollars. When you have many congregations, many, many, many churches, to your point. They're made up of people who don't have a lot. But together, you know, even if they gave a dollar, if they gave 50 cents, if they gave a lot, this is what they have, that should be enough. God will take that and he'll multiply it. But you can't stand up there and tell people, you know, beat them up and say, well, because you didn't get $10, you know, God ain't going to bless you. Or wait, you stand over here and you give $20. Everybody with my $20 stand over here. It's because basically what you just said is, Unless you're able to give twenty dollars, you're not going to get a blessing. God don't work that way. It, it just doesn't work that way. That's us. Doing that's it. That God doesn't do yeah. that. If you got fifty cent, your fifty cent, like Jesus said, that woman with the little two denarius, he said, "Hey, 
that's all she has. But trust me, what she's given, God will smile on that just as much as whatever you give because she gave from the heart. This is she she could have kept that, that that money, but this is what she had to give. So she gave what she had. And um, I do believe God smiles on that. Unfortunately, like I said, it's us that come up with all of this this yeah. crazy stuff. You don't do that, and it's wrong. It's flat out wrong. It you know, is. There's no, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The God we serve does not operate that way. Absolutely. And then to add to that point, you can't get around the scripture that says, "To whom much is given, much is required." <laughs> so if if you ain't got much. Much ain't, ain't too much regard, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think that our time and our effort and every other thing, every, any other thing that we could do as far as our labor, that is also counted as well, you know, because there's a lot of other things that you do in the ministry that counts as well, besides uh, besides just funds all the time. There's a lot of other things as well. well to your point, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I'm going to go back to. I can use the example of my mom. She didn't have money. But you know what? She'd get in there. She'd work in the church. She'd help clean the church. She'd do whatever she could do. You know, Absolutely. Uh, we didn't have, to, didn't have to pay somebody to come in to do it because she would go in there and do it. But one day, out of her faithfulness, amen. out of her faithfulness, God saw that. And he said, you know what? I can trust you. So I'm going to give you this. And he did. And so I am uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for that example in my life. Um, and uh, and, you know, so that uh, when I stand in the pulpit and I've done it for 18 years, man, I've seen a lot of stuff go on. And um, I feel I feel blessed that we have the congregation that we have and that they understand it and that, you know, uh, the Lord has allowed me to basically teach them the right way. Amen. amen. You know, um, we go ahead, Doc. Um, no, I was, I was just going to let you guys know we kind of like running out of time. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought we were doing a two hour. No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really, I had really two hour work with both questions. <laughs> 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 I still gotta play music. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we gotta go to the talk. I see you again. I do want to. I do, Pastor Moore. I do want to do a part two with you. I promise you, I'll come well, back and do it again. And also, well, also I want to invite you. I want to invite you this Sunday, man, to our Iron Sharpen Iron. I believe that you will enjoy it. I believe you will enjoy it uh, and get a lot of, out of it. Uh, we have different pastors from around the United States come on, and with great topics, like he mentioned earlier, we we uh, were talking about uh, church hurt. Mm -hmm. Last mm -hmm. week we talked about what was we talking about last week, John? We talked about uh, what makes uh, a good what, leader. What makes a great leader in the church? Great leader. Uh, um, and then we talked about what did Jerome had? Jerome had. Uh, what makes a great leader? Right? Politics no. in the church. Politics in the church. Yeah. And, and um, I don't know if you agree with another with another uh, uh, radio uh, uh, personality, which I'll be uh, introducing you to them so they can interview you also. Called uh, right now Praise Radio. There is their turn this week. So what the way we do it? We give everybody a week to moderate. So when you moderate, you you choose the topic. So I think that's something that you would interest you know interest in you. I think I think it would interest in you. So, and I was right. gonna get your opinion on that. Um, what do you think the church stand within politics now, especially within the Democratic and Republican Party? And what do you think the African American church, the Black church? What do you think they should be doing? How should how should we be preparing? And should we be gearing up for the new apocalypse? Um, that's uh, some of the things I wanted. I wanted to talk about. And should we be gearing up for the uh, new world order or the one world order? What should we be preparing ourselves for? Because here's the faith of the saints, the patience of the saints. That right there, we're in the patience part, the grooming part. Uh, not, I don't think we're in the new jubilee or nothing like that. I think we're in the patience part, and I think we need to really be watching to uh, in 2025 what's going to be coming up. Uh, if, are we in the red or pale horse? Which horse are we in? Or uh, if all these are just myths, I was going to ask you something like that. But on the next time in the exclusive, 
we're going to get down to it in our uh, in, <laughs> in our conclusion uh, and in our continuum. So this is going to be to be continued, Dr. Herndon, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And soon. Um, uh, soon. Uh, I mean, uh, if, uh, if, if you if you want to before Christmas, if possible. Okay. Well, I tell you what. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, I'll check uh, what we have on our itinerary, and then let, let's see what we can do. Okay. 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 And let's try to remember this uh, during this pandemic season. Uh, I certainly want to remember these questions, and uh, I want to get your uh, humble, honest opinion about it, Pastor. <laughs> you got the you got the best background for it. Well, I, I will tell you. I will tell you this, um, it just in parting. Um, the Bible tells us that patience is better than strength. And that's significant because whenever you read the Bible, you always hear the Lord say, wait. You always hear him telling us to wait on him, wait on him. He told Isaiah, wait. He told Habakkuk, wait. Um, with all the things that are going on right now, the one thing that we need to do as a black church is keep our eyes on the Lord and do our jobs. That's, it. that's very important. So I'm going to leave you with that. Very important. That's Amen. very important. And and I was going to add to it. You added all those other prophets. I was going to say somebody should should have told uh, uh, S Samuel uh, uh, to wait. <laughs> uh, what no? What was his name? The strongest, the the one that was the strongest one. Uh, what was his name? Samson. Samson. Yeah. Somebody should should have told Samson to just wait, Samson, because Delilah is going to be somebody in the background that you're going to have to need to wait on it before you tell her who you are, where your strength is. Mm -hmm. Yes, patience is virtue. His strength is right here. And nobody can cut right. it off. Right. But like, but like the Pharaoh say, if it's written, it is done. <laughs> there you go. I like it. Thank you again. All right, guys. So uh, I appreciate you guys having uh, me. Uh, Pastor Moore, you can look for this. Uh, I'm going to be putting it up as soon as I edit it. I got to edit it to uh, two shows now. So you can look for it though on our on our So Capture Television Network. Okay. It, it's so to kbdhradio.com. All the information on how to get to our television network will be there. And okay. Then a, and then um um like I say, we can turn this into a series. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I enjoy I enjoyed our time. I enjoyed that. You, you know, he's, he's my protege. I had to let him do a lot of. Things. <laughs> and so and join our book club, uh Pastor. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I, I you be part it. of it. <laughs> I, I appreciate you guys having me on your show. Oh, no problem. Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, so listen, Until we meet again. Thanks again. Big shout out to Miss Amber. Big shout out to Miss Amber. Thank you, Miss Amber. And again, happy late birthday, Dr. Herndon. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And yeah, I'm